Hi, this is Ahmed Alokaili and Manos Berlakis presenting case 167 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of CTO-PCI techniques for treating a wire uncrossable lesion. The patient who was a 73-year-old gentleman who presented with medical refractory angina due to a subtotal lesion in the right coronary artery that could not be crossed with a guide wire. As a result, he was referred to our institution for a repeat PCI attempt. This is the left system, which was assessed uh, using physiology, and there was no significant uh, hemodynamic lesions, despite the geographic intermediate lesions. And this is the right coronary artery. When the patient came to us, we do have an 8 friends L1 guide, which helps tackling complex lesions. And this is indeed a very complex lesion. There is heavy calcium. It looks almost like a total lesion, but there is undergrade flow. And the distal vessel also has some calcification and a distal lesion. The flow is TM2 flow. So we decided to try first using a microcatheter and a polymer jacketed guide wire, but we were unable to cross. We used a Sion Black as well. We used a Gaia Next 2 that seems to be going outside the vessel architecture. And then uh, we used uh, a Sion Black that uh, eventually went into an acute marginal branch that was located next to the proximal cap of the lesion. We predilated into that branch in an open sesame fashion, but then unfortunately we were still unable to advance a wire through the mid right coronary artery. And eventually we decided to use the sexual entry. So this is a Gladius Mongo guide wire that was knuckled across the mid right coronary artery and was advanced towards the distal right coronary artery. We used a trap liner and delivered a stingray balloon. Of course, by now we had lost visualization on the distal RCA and the PDA, so we obtained a contralateral femoral arterial axis to be able to visualize. We then uh, used the filter XT to deliver the stingray balloon in the distal straight segment of the right coronary artery, and then uh, oriented the view to allow optimal visualization of the stingray balloon. This is the view we like, in which the stingray appears as a single line versus as a tram track that uh, shows that we're not uh, perpendicular to the exit points of the balloon. We did the stick and swap technique. We uh, used a stiff guide wire to puncture and then a pilot 200 to switch, given the diffuse disease and calcification on the vessel. And again, it took uh, a few attempts, but eventually through the superior facing port of the stingray, we were able to advance the guide wire. Of course, we want to confirm, and sure enough, with contralateral injection, we confirmed that we're in the distal true lumen. This is the intravascular ultrasound that uh, is quite interesting because we do have some subindimal entry of the vessel. Again, we have some calcium. And... Um, we do have uh, here an extra plaque position. We see that we are outside the architecture. It's an oval shape of the vessel. These are the still frames distally with the true lumen. There is an intramural hematoma, likely because of use of the knuckles. And then uh, the true lumen is collapsed, but proximally we are as expected in the true lumen. So we predilated and stented with drug eluting stents. And although by Ivus the stand was not round, the area was pretty good, so oval shaped. And then when the stand was in the true lumen more proximally, we have a nice expansion of the stand with a circular configuration. And this is the final angiogram. We do have a TM3 flow into the right coronary artery and going to the PDA. There is some diffuse disease in the PDA posterior lateral, which we elected to not treat. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, using CTO-PCI techniques, namely undergrade dissection or entry, can be useful in non-CTO lesions. This was a high-grade but non-occlusive uh, lesion in the mid-right coronary artery with heavy calcification that could not be crossed with a guide wire. Using the sexual re-entry, we're able to recanalize the lesion, and by having a guide wire in the marginal of the proximal cap, we're able to maintain patency of this branch.
For cases like this, IVUS is critical, as for every complex PCI, to make sure that a nice uh, stand area is achieved. And then in cases with heavy calcium, when we stand into the extra plug space, the goal is not to make the artery perfectly round. Having an oval shape is perfectly fine because one can only expand in one direction if there is heavy calcification. And if we are very persistent and use high pressure balloon inflations, then we risk uh, to have a coronary perforation. Thank you.